Oh, well, hey, I was uh, just reading or taking a nap or something. But anyway, what, what a better time to uh, catch up on some of our reading that we've been doing in these videos. So um, we've been reading about this, and it seems like Ali is starting to uh, kind of figure out the difference between being kind to people and fitting in with some of the cool crowd that's around in her school. So let's uh, go ahead and pick up in chapter 12. This uh, chapter's titled, What's Your Problem, Albert? Light from the hallway pours into my room as my mom opens the door. Hey, honey. Hey. I came in to check on you. You seem very quiet at dinner tonight. Some, is something going on? <laughs> mean kids at school. Oh, Allie Bug, I'm sorry you had to put up with that. What happened? Well, the kids who were mean, yeah? I was kind of one of them. Oh, she said with a sigh. I'm surprised by that, Allie. Tell me what happened. Those girls that came into Peterson's that time, well, they asked me to have lunch with them. I sat at their table, but then they started being mean to this kid named Albert about his clothes. I look up at her eyes, and I went along with it. I feel bad about it. My mom brushes my forehead with her fingertips. You're not a little girl anymore, Allie, so it's not too soon to decide what kind of person you want to be. Of course, I know what kind of person you are, and I love you for it. She kisses me on the forehead. You made a mistake. Everyone does. Just do your best to make it right. That's all. The words, I'm sorry, are powerful ones. Yeah, okay, I'll make it right with him. That's my girl, she says, kissing my forehead one more time before leaving. The next morning at school, I'm wondering how I can make things right with Albert. I'm drawing a pigeon uh, wedding, a pigeon wedding in my sketchbook. I don't know that Keisha is standing behind me. You drew that? I move my arm to cover it. Why would you cover it? If I drew it like that, I'd put a commercial on TV about it. Thanks, I mumble. I don't know why I'm embarrassed, but I am. Keisha sits in her chair, and I stare at her head full of thin braids, thinking it must take three days to do all that. So beautiful. I just love it. Not like my boring hair that just hangs there. I reach out to touch her hair. She turns toward me all of a sudden. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I, uh, sorry, there was a mosquito. Sometimes I can't believe the things I do. It's like my arm has its own brain. Uh-huh, Keisha says. Just then, Albert walks in, and he looks upset. I want to be able to tell my mom that I made things right with him, so I go over. Albert, are, are you okay? I ask, wondering if he'll tell me to strap myself to a rocket and light the fuse. I have a problem. I'm sorry about the cafeteria thing, I blurt out. His eyebrows rise. Ah, that didn't bother me. No need to apologize. It didn't bother you at all to have a table full of people make fun of you? You're kidding. Why would I be kidding? Can it be that he really doesn't care about what people think of him? We just stare at each other. If that didn't bother him at all, and this new problem really does, then it must be really bad. Maybe it has to do with the bruises he had all, over, all the time. Uh, can I help? I asked. No offense, but I don't really think so. Okay, I mumble. It's just a problem that I can't get out of my head. I feel like I won't be able to relax until I find an answer. Do you want to talk about it? I know sometimes when I have a problem, I talk it out with my brother or mom. Even if, it doesn't find an, even if I don't find an answer, I feel better anyway. Well... I wait. I've just been wondering, if an insect is flying inside a moving train car, is it traveling faster than the train itself? And if the insect flies in the opposite direction of the train it's moving in, is it then traveling more slowly than the train? Obviously, if a fly is on the wall, it is moving at the same speed, as long as it isn't walking. But the movement within movement is a puzzle to me. Oh. He turns to me, a little intense. You can see the problem here. He doesn't ask, he tells. I know he doesn't really think I can help. 
who knows if I could possibly figure out the science part of what he's talking about. But my mind shows me that in that insect in the train car, it's a dragonfly with brilliant greenish blue wings and tiny goggles over its eyes. The car is old with dark wood walls and dark green curtains, like from Grandpa's Westerns. And the people have old fashioned clothes. I see them like they're with me now. Some of the men are sleeping. One is waving the dragonfly off of the newspaper, not even noticing its tiny goggles. Ladies with the most beautiful dresses sit there too. And I see a girl who is with her mother, and her mother keeps asking the girl if she is enjoying the ride, and the girl keeps saying yes, be, being sure to have happy sounding of what have a happy sounding voice. I don't know everything about that girl, but I do know that she has a lot more to worry about than an insect on a train. She doesn't fit in. She's all dressed up in fancy clothes and has to pretend to be someone she's not. She wants to muck around, help build fences. She wants to ride a horse the real way, not side saddle like her mother insists. When I come back from my mind movie, Albert has already walked away, but I don't care. I can't help thinking about the girl on the train and how she feels. Like she wants to do much, wants to do so much, but she's held back, and it makes her feel heavy and angry, like she's dragging a concrete block around all of the time. I'd like to help her break free from that. I love seeing the creativity that's in Allie's mind as she pictures these mind movies. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this read aloud. Uh, this is quickly becoming one of my new favorite books, uh, Fish in a Tree. I think that uh, we'll just continue to read it on here and you can keep checking back in to see what's going to happen next to Allie. All right. See you guys later.